Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I want to talk to you about building healthy relationships and solving problems that, that interfere with having a healthy relationship. Um, the place to start here is with an understanding of what it means to actually love someone. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether that's a friend or it's a romantic relationship, a committed relationship, or a, a child or relative or, or stranger. Um, love is probably the most misunderstood uh, concept in our world today. And, and I comment about that on another video uh, called Comments on Human Nature. So I would refer you to that one for some more information. Um, but uh, love really seems to have been distorted in our culture over many centuries. It, it's taken on a, almost uh, a meaning of like a, an economic transaction, okay? Uh, so if I'm looking for someone to love, I'm looking for someone who will make me feel good, who, who um, uh, you know, who is uh, uh, at least, um, I, well, I'm looking for a good deal, okay? Someone, someone who, of course, will love me and accept me, but someone who will raise me up in some way and, and, and make me a better person and make my life uh, more fu fulfilled. And uh, uh, there's a concept of, of it, that person then filling a need within me. Uh, but I think in many respects that's the opposite of love. Uh, I would say that the opposite of love is selfishness. And to the extent that someone is focused on their own self or has a, a, their own need that is unfulfilled, uh, that creates complications for love. And, and in working with couples and people struggling with relationships, uh, that's a very common thing. People have, get into relationships before they're ready to, before they have their own feet on the ground and are clear about what their own life is. And so comments in movies like, uh, you uh, fulfill me or, or, you know, I need you so much, uh, really are, are indications of immaturity. Uh, rather than to any depth of love, because love doesn't fill a personal need. Love is something that goes out to another person. And, and the simplest definition uh, that I can think of for love is that it's, first of all, a commitment. And secondly, it's a commitment to the well-being of another person. So love focuses on the other. So let's say, let's take a partnership. When you have two people who form each of them a commitment that the other becomes the best possible person they can be, then you really have a beautiful thing going on there because their lives, by the nature of that commitment and by their own true nature, just keeps on developing and growing and deepening. Uh, through that process. Now we run into all kinds of obstacles for that and w when those obstacles are dealt with in a healthy way that actually deepens the love. Uh, in many respects um, uh, love doesn't begin until you run into some obstacles. Uh, I've even told couples that uh, uh, now love begins when they when they don't like each other anymore and are thinking about divorce because that when the, that's when the commitment is tested. Uh, early on in a relationship when the attraction is flowing and, and there's a chemical explanation for that uh, which actually dissipates over time. Uh, but when the attraction is flowing, then it's easy. There's just a flow there and, and there's no depth to it. it. It's like kindling wood to build a fire. It won't keep you warm through the night. I mean, it'll warm up maybe your hands a little bit uh, for a little while, but then it dies out and it's gone. And, and then the real work begins and that's when the love begins is is when there's this emptiness. and um, And then you have to to work through that and continue the commitment beside that. Um, and it, it cannot, I want to go back uh, uh, just for a moment about uh, meeting your own needs is different than loving, okay? Because loving is looking at the needs, the realistic needs of another person, which is of course different than giving them what they want. Um, uh, sometimes the, the most loving thing that can be done in a relationship is to leave someone particularly if there is violence or addiction and that relationship in any way is feeling, feeding that violence or addiction, then many times the most loving thing to do is to leave. Um, but in terms of, of uh, getting a, a picture of this sense of need in a relationship, uh, I gave a presentation a number of years ago and, and I brought in some props that, that wound up working out pretty well. I got two big blocks of wood and I set them up against each other and I said, this is a common understanding of what love is, okay? This one's holding this one up and together we're holding each other together and, and I need you and you need me and if you go away I'm gonna collapse. And, and uh, But 
actually it doesn't work very well, okay? Because then I took out a piece of plywood and I set it on top and I put a little pressure on the plywood and the whole thing collapsed and we just had a mess, okay? And that's what happens when people start a relationship like that. So, so then I took the, each of the, the, the large blocks of wood and had them set on their own. So each one was independent and solid on its own, okay? One block here, one block here, and I put the piece of plywood on top of it, and then I actually stepped on it, okay? And very gently, of course, because it would hurt myself, but I jumped up and down. I put pressure on it, and they withstood the pressure, and that's the indication of a healthy relationship where you've got a solid grounded person here and a solid grounded person here. Each of them knows who they are and what they want from life and together they form a platform on which they can build a family and build uh, a life together. Uh, and uh, so what goes wrong with that? Um, well, quite frankly, it, it's, it's uh, a misunderstanding of what love is. Uh, people come in all the time and I don't know who started this phrase, but it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, they say, I love him, but I'm not in love with him. And basically what I understand that to mean is, is I care about that person, but I don't have any attraction anymore, or don't feel affectionate. Well, that happens, okay? Attraction and affection are emotions, and emotions are temporary, and that will change with the time. And actually, when that dry period hits, it serves a function. Uh, and it happens often a number of times through the uh, length of a relationship. Uh, and that's where the commitment comes in. That's where you choose to focus on what's in the best interest of the, the other person. And again, that's not giving them what they want. That's looking at the larger picture. And if they're going in a direction that's destructive, it's putting an obstacle in that direction and calling them on it in a way that is likely to work and to, and to be helpful. Uh, and it often happens that, that people will come in and the, uh, the partner uh, isn't interested in coming in. Actually, I, I've treated more couples in that way than I have seeing them together. Uh, and I've learned that that's not a problem and, and that can be just as effective, but it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of commitment. Uh, asking whether it's fair is simply not a helpful question. Uh, first of all, uh, the word fair uh, implies that there's a competition. And if you're playing a game of football, you know, the level has to, the playing field has to be level and the same rules apply to both and you want that to be fair. But love is not a competition and a relationship is not a competition. It's a cooperation. And I, I've worked in situations where one person has done uh, virtually all of the work to resolve the, the relationship and it's well worth it. They have a beautiful relationship now that they're, they're satisfied with. Um, but here's a, a common thing that happens in relationship, uh, someone feels hurt and they put up a wall. Okay, they put up a defense and there's a wall here and when this wall is here, you don't see the person underneath it. You see the wall, okay? And walls don't resolve problems. Walls actually tend to create thicker walls. So you got one person here and one person here and each one's building up a wall. Well, let's imagine that there's water flowing between it, okay? And, and that's the conflict and the difficulty. So as that puts pressure on the wall, well, this wall becomes thicker, and this wall becomes thicker, okay? So each of the walls become thicker and thicker, and as the defenses go up in a relationship, the tension goes up, which creates more defenses, and the tension goes up, which creates more defenses. So now you've got a lot of pressure in this water pushing against these walls, and the walls are getting thicker and thicker, and the relationship is getting worse and worse. So the solution actually is quite simple, but very challenging, okay? Take down one wall. And I have seen consistently over, over decades, frankly, uh, that when people have had the courage and the heart to do that, to take down the one wall, let those defenses go. And it isn't just all done in one moment, okay? They, they, you know, and then it comes down, okay? And then they keep it down, it comes back, and then they keep it down, okay? But when you take this wall down, what happens to the water? It reaches its own level, okay? There's no more pressure on this wall. And what I've seen happen consistently, and this is in couples, and this is, uh, I'm thinking of a, of a grandmother who came in and told me that her son told her that uh, she would never see her grandchildren or he or his wife again. Uh, that was the end of their relationship, and if they ran into each other in a store, he would leave. Um, well, this happened in January, and uh, uh, by Thanksgiving, uh, she had them over for dinner again, and she simply took down the wall, okay, and looked at where he was, looked at what he was responding to, looked at her own responsibility in that, and of course he had some responsibility too, but she just looked at her part, 
and and was continuing, uh, and very gently because he needed to be respected. His his needs of the lack of contact needed respected. So she did that, but she found ways to to communicate very gently that. And over time, this wall serves no purpose, and that gets back to our nature. And I believe our nature is to have loving relationships, and so that wall comes back, comes down. Okay, and then things work out. Uh, I, I even uh, had a situation where I worked with a woman uh, where be both, turns out, in the course of treatment, I found out that both she and her husband had post-traumatic stress disorder. disorder. Uh, they had been uh, both uh, molested uh, as children, and there was a great deal of natural defensiveness uh, that came up. And I never saw him. And uh, she worked very hard and very uh, went through a lot of difficult uh, periods, but kept opening her heart, kept opening his heart, her heart, and all indications are that his post-traumatic stress resolved because he was able to be fully emotional to her over time when I talked to her uh, sometime later. Um, and uh, I never saw it. He never did any work, but she understood what he was going through, allowed him to experience those emotions and let go. And, and there's a, a video on post-traumatic stress disorder that explains this process a bit. Um, but uh, in summary, the, the idea of having a healthy relationship is a growing, deepening relationship that requires work, and it's based on commitment. Commitment is the foundation uh, for that relationship. Uh, the other problem, actually, that that, that brings up, uh, another comment I'd like to make on this, uh, is the issue of trust when a relationship is, is damaged, uh, often by an affair or, or violence or something like that. Then trust needs to be rebuilt, and that's a long-term process. That's a process that takes months. Uh, I often use the, uh, the metaphor uh, with clients in that situation of when I used to work with my father and we did construction, and there was a house that had a badly damaged foundation that was really badly cracked and the house was starting to settle a little bit and we had to jack up the whole house and then tear down the foundation and take out even the footings because they were cracked and broken and dig down deeper and put in new footings and build up new walls and then set the house back down and then fix the house again. That's kind of what it's like uh, to rebuild a relationship or build, rebuild trust in a relationship and it's a lengthy process and it requires verification and some people think oh you should just decide to trust me well, you can decide to make a commitment and to live out that commitment, but the trust needs to be built uh, step by step, brick by brick. And that often requires verification and that requires support. It requires consistency over time and it requires limits and boundaries. Uh, and if someone can't respect the limits or boundaries, then there's a deficit there. And if they're not willing to work on that deficit, in some cases, uh, rarer than you may think, uh, the more loving thing to do at that point is to leave the relationship, and that's a condition where that makes perfect sense. Uh, but when the nature is not distorted and people see what's really there, they will respond to that, and relationships grow and deepen over time. So it's something to think about, and I would encourage you to, uh, to give it some thought and to see uh, how it applies in your life. Good luck.